Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to learn about a threaded mount and how to make one. Um, so you'll learn a little bit about thread. You'll learn a little bit about some things um, as far as what's called a helix. Um, we're going to work on what's called shelling, which you guys have done once or twice maybe, um, a web, a chamfer, and then how to create custom holes with specific notes and that kind of stuff within um, Onshape. So first things first, we've got to sign in. <clears throat> AAPS.onshape.com. Once you're in there, um, we'll close YouTube here, uploading some stuff. You're going to come into Teams. You're going to come into All Company Users. And you are going to find Threaded Mount. Now, in yours, obviously, yours is going to say View Only, Copy Only. So you go to the stack. You go to Copy Workspace. And instead of Copy, we want this to have your name, in my case, Cupid. Once it creates that new um, workspace, then you guys can start editing things. Again, as practice, make sure you're in the right units. We are, in this case, in millimeters already, so we're good to go. And now we can begin. Um, so after we've copied everything, we're gonna create our first set of holes. And you can see, I've kind of helped you out a little bit. I'm gonna turn these planes off so we can see what we're doing. Um, you've seen I've created this rectangle for you. Um, and those are just reference points for you guys to use. So when you make these holes, that you have something to select. So we're going to come into hole, it's a new command, and we want what's called a counter bore. Um, that drops the head within the part so that it is flush, so that um, basically it's for safety, for aesthetics, um, those kind of things. So we're going to create a counter bore, and we're going to select the points where we want the center of those holes to be. We'll talk more about types of holes and all that kind of stuff later down the road, um, but I just wanted you guys to get to practice showing you what and how to create these things. Um, so we selected those four holes, and as you can see, these measurements are exactly what is in the walkthrough. And if they're not, just match them. Um, but it says 7.5 millimeters across the gap. So if I come to the other side, that's this gap. If I look at 10 millimeters, that is right here. It shows you a little preview of what it looks like over here. Um, that's this gap all the way across of the big opening. And then the 2.5 is how deep the head of the bolt will drop in. So again, once you put this bolt in, it'll disappear and it'll be completely flush. Um, nothing will snag and all that kind of stuff. It'll be, it just be 10 times easier for um, whoever's using the product. So um, after you get there, you can hit the green check mark. And now we've created our first set of holes within there, okay? Now um, we can go through and shell the outside, or I should say the inside of this product. So I'm gonna select just the inside right away, and I'm gonna to go to shell, which is right here. It automatically selects and uses that plane to push in, and we want the wall thickness to be 2.5, so it's actually already set up. I can hit the green check mark, and as you can see, it kind of created um, just basically a hollow portion within there. And that's just to save on material, save in manufacturing, all that. Um, next thing is you wanna to make to turn on the right plane, and as you can see, it's right here in the front. We want to make it in the center of this object, and the purpose of this is so that we can give support to this main beam. You can see it's kind of just hanging off into its own world, and it's really long, and it's it's not stable. So we're going to create what are called ribs, um, like we've done before, to support this object. In order to do that, we've got to create a new sketch um, from this right, train, or right plane, um, and we're going to offset it in. So in order to create that new sketch, again, we're going to create a new plane. We're going to offset, and it already goes in, which is awesome, and it already sets it to 25 millimeters, which is awesome, which is what we want. You hit the green check mark, and now we have plane one. We're going to turn the right plane off because we don't need that anymore. It just gets in the way. And now you can see we're going to start kind of drawing in the center of this object. So we're going to create a rib, and all you have to do is create a new sketch onto this plane. Let's bring this to the center. So I click the plane, right click. New sketch. Remember, a plane is not a sketching surface, it's just a reference. So I'm going to go and make it sure it's flat. And there's not a lot of science here. You just press the uh, line, and I'm going to project. I'm not clicking yet, I'm just moving my mouse up, drawing a straight line down. Enter or escape, whatever you need. Hit the line again. Move my mouse over, I'm not clicking yet. Now I click once, not holding, and then I click again escape and I'm gonna dimension these to be oh that's already dimension right there I can double click that and I want them to be a hundred a piece so hundred this way oops and I want this one which didn't come up with a dimension to also be 
100. I'm not following any dimensioning rules here. I'm just putting them there as references. So now I have 100 and 100, and I'm good to go. I can press the green check mark, and now it's created those lines that I can use um, to rib this piece. So as you can see, now I've, I've hit that green check mark. I'm done with that sketch. Now I can come up, and it changes the toolbar. I'm going to come up to rib, and it asks me to what profiles do I want. I want that profile and a profile there, and those are basically what what I'm going to extrude back or rib back for support. Parts, I want to select the actual part itself. And as you can see here, um, these two edges are not going to work unless you drop this down and say normal to sketch. It goes the wrong way, you change the arrow to the opposite way and merge ribs to the actual part. If you ever seen this dial under here, this is kind of a nice little feature. It shows you what was before and what is after. You slide that up and down and it kind of gives you a preview of what's going to happen if you hit the green check mark. But as you can see, it created those supports. We can hit the green check mark um, and now we had supported that piece through our object. Good to go, hit the green check mark. And now we want to extend the thread um, piece here. So we have to kind of create a new circle. Um, this circle here is just the hole itself. So we're going to create a new sketch onto that surface. And we're going to do a circle command from the center. And again, you can make it from the you know true view. Um, and we're going to make this uh, do, 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 22. So I'm going to hit 22, enter. And it's just a little bit bigger than that opening, and that's what we want. So after I created that, um, I can go ahead and hit the green check mark because that's done with that sketch. And I'm going to extrude not only this part, but this part as well. I don't want it to be hollow. I want it to be a solid piece. So both circles, okay, this profile here on the outside as well as the inside. And I want to extrude that um, 50 millimeters. Okay, we want it to merge with all because we want it to merge with the existing part already. And we want to make sure it adds. Hit the green check mark. And now we have something we can work with here. Um, so we are going to first before we kind of go crazy We're going to chamfer the end of this so that when we had the nuts to go onto the bolt or into this case Just the threaded set a set um, We are going to be able to put it on a little easier. So we're gonna come up to chamfer And I'm going to select this line and as you can see it automatically starts giving me a piece here We want this to be 2.5 not 5 And it makes it a little bit more subtle less subtle I should say Press the green check mark, and now we have something that makes it a little easier for the bolt to fly on. Sorry, the nut to fly on. Hit the green check mark, and now this is kind of the, the fun part where we start creating the helix. I'm going to turn this plane off again just so it's not a distraction. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So now we're going to start making the threads onto this part here. Um, these are kind of new, and this is it's not um, very easy. It's not like you know super, super straightforward. Um, it's a little tricky, and if you don't follow these steps in this order, it will not work. So... Um, I hope I kind of mess up, to be honest with you, a little bit here just to show you how, how this is a little difficult. But I digress. First thing you got to do is um, from the top plane, we're going to turn that top plane on. I apologize. From the top plane, we're going to create a new sketch. So I'm going right, to click on it once, right click, new sketch. And as you can see, it created that sketch. And just so it's nice and pretty, I'll go to the top view and make it look nice. So we're in this sketch. And then it says select the line command. Um, I apologize, I skipped a step. So see, I'm already messing up. Good, I'll close that out. So didn't do anything yet, I apologize, no new sketch. First, we gotta make the helix. So we're gonna come up here and you're gonna see helix. It's kind of a new thing. And it says uh, conical or cylindrical face. So basically we wanna select the face where we wanna put the helix on. And all a helix is is just a basically a, a path or a screw that goes down into um, any shape you want or any ro revolutions you want at any angle you want all that jazz so we want the revolutions to be 25 and that just makes them so that I can hit enter to give you a preview just makes it so that they're closer together um, for lack of a better description um, don't worry about starting angle or any of that kind of stuff and hit the green check mark now we have a helix or a path think of it that way um, that we can follow and it looks a little crazy if I even click on it but that's um, just the line path now we need to if you look close enough it's really not cut it's just a line on top of a surface we need these to be grooves inside of this piece so in order to do that we need to do a sweep so I'm gonna to come to this top view and like I did before I apologize click the top view right click it new sketch and as you can see now I have a sketch um, and you're gonna come down and after you click that you're gonna say select the line com command and we are going to find um, basically the I made a little gif here um, kind of the bottom portion down here right at the base here 
and you're gonna create a triangle. Okay, and you're gonna make it one, and then we're gonna use our equal geom geometry or geometric constraints to make sure that this is equal to this and this is equal to this, so it'll make it a perfect um, triangle. Okay, so it's a one by one by one, good to go, isosceles. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, use a new, completely new command um, called Pierce Constraint. And what this does is it forces this triangle to connect to this line, even though they're not really the same thing. Um, it's kind of a, a cool little feature. So that's up here, it's called Pierce. And we're gonna select the bottom view, bottom line, and we're going to select the helix itself. It doesn't look like it did anything, um, but it did, trust me. And to check that, you can say show constraints, and you'll zoom in, and you can see the pierce is now there. Okay. So now after that, um, I'm going to hit the green check mark, and this is where the, the fun happens. So after I've created that, I'm going to go to sweep. I'm going to select the face, which is the triangle. This isn't anything new, along the helix path and we want it to remove and then merge with all. Press the green check mark and as you can see, now it's created those grooves, it's wrapped continuously over and over and over and over again and cut that triangle out of this part to give the visualization of threads, which is really cool to us. Um, so you hit the merge all, you hit the green check mark and now you can see, um, like I said, all the helix and all of your threads are there. And that is it for this part. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please ask your teacher. Thanks, guys.